going to show what the outside of the box looks like, provide you guys a little review of the packaging and what the inside contents look like regarding the miner, and then run through the setup process. So. All right, here's the gold shell miner uh, removed from the box. You can see the Dogecoin etched right there on the side of the box with the rocket going to the moon, the same thing we had on the box of the gold shell cardboard box that is. Here's the power supply unit. Uh, one thing to note about that power supply, it does get rather hot. Um, also a note, a thing to note is that the power cable right here, this isn't the standard US power cable. So you'll have to get an aftermarket power adapter cable. Um, any power cable for a computer will work just fine um, as that plugs in right on the back of this power supply. Um, and then there's the other side of the actual uh, miner. Go ahead and turn this around real quick so you can see what this looks like. And uh, yeah, there's your network interface controller card. You'll plug in your category six cat five cable and then your power connection on the very bottom. So not a very big miner. If you think of a miner, very beginner entry level ASIC miner. Um, again, this is after I got that controller repaired in it. I just want to provide a review now that I got this up and running and it's super and it's functional. So I'll go ahead and show you guys how to uh, connect this to an F2 mining F2 mining pool next. All right, so we went ahead and moved the miner to where it's going to be located at. Got the power supply hooked up. Got the network interface cable ready to plug in. So we can go ahead and plug everything in and watch it boot up. All right, so we got the power plugged in. Network interface cable. Uh, we're starting to see the little blue activity light at the very top. This miner is going to actually go through this boot up process. You can hear the fans kicking up pretty loud. And by the way, this is probably the loudest it will get for the duration of its mining. All right, welcome back everybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how I went about to actually uh, configuring the Gold Child Miner. Um, don't really talk about this a whole lot. Found this on one of the Telegram groups, but the find.goldchild.com, if you type that in, uh, in your address bar on any browser, um, I'll actually go ahead and refresh this and show you guys what it looks like. So let's see, let's refresh this again and see what it comes up. So as you can see, there's three different Gold Child Mini Doges that pop up. Uh, the one that was from a month ago uh, was actually, is the same one as this right here. Uh, this one listed here. Um, it's just reflecting a different IP address because of a different controller with a different MAC address. You're gonna get a different IP address. So uh, from here, you can actually find all the different Gold Child products that are on your local area network. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go into the settings for this. And so from the settings, uh, you can take a look at all the different features, the mining status, you can see the reject rate, the hardware errors, the overall average hash rate, how long it's been online for, the uh, temperature, uh, a lot of cool features. You can see which firmware version you're running, what hardware version you're running. Um, go into the minor settings right in here. You should be able to take a look at the actual physical MAC address um, and then the pool settings. This is exactly where you're going to want to change those pool settings. So. Um, my system's locked right now, so I have to unlock it. And uh, I'm sorry, I guess it was already locked, so I'm gonna unlock it. Uh, this is where it takes you to unlock the minor tab. Um, as you can see, the password is super secure. Not right now. And so here we go. I can go ahead and make some configuration changes to the actual miner itself. So uh, in this case, I already got my stuff set up. And uh, you can see uh, right in here, the actual uh, worker name, and then the actual password, um, and then the actual pool itself. So it's the Stratum uh, plus TCP, uh, Litecoin F2 pool. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to add that in there real quick. So it's pretty simple um, protocol. It's already set for you. F2 pool makes it pretty easy if that's one of the main ones that, I think that's actually one of the main ones that a lot of people are using. So you can go and click on that. That's gonna automatically put that information in there. And then this is where the username and password need to go. So you're gonna get that actually from the uh, F2 pool. So uh, obviously you gotta create an account, sign in with your account. You can see I'm signing in right now. Go ahead and do this little verification piece. Yay, it succeeded. 
And uh, I have to switch this over to Litecoin because I don't have any Bitcoin miners right now at this time. And uh, here you go to actually uh, the homepage for Litecoin. You can see my hash rate for the last 24 hours. It's been pretty good, right? Um, pretty neat. Uh, so you can see uh, all the mining addresses that you could put in. But again, uh, the uh, miner already makes that easier for you to put that in. Um, if you go into the workers, you're going to see the two workers that I got working right now. Um, but I'm going to go back real quick and actually go back to the Bitcoin um, because I believe this is where it shows you. Ah, there we go. So this is where it shows you the actual uh, setup for actual setting up a, a, a miner. So in this case, it's going to be this is the worker name and this is going to be the password. So all you got to do is you got to copy and paste those right into here. You're going to copy in that username, you're going to copy in that password. Now, one thing I'd recommend doing is not going back and forth like this because when you do so, I'll just I'll show you what happens. I'm gonna copy this, I'll paste that in there, and I'm like, all right, cool. What's my password? Let's go ahead and copy my password, and there you go. The username is wiped out. So the ideal thing to do is to actually have these two windows side by side so you can copy the username and password. Once you got those two fields complete, you go ahead and hit the apply button. And then that's going to take you right back to here. Actually, I'm sorry. This is going to take you right back here. You'll see it pending, and then it'll go to an active status within 30 to 60 seconds. At that point, you're good to go, and uh, your system should reflect in the F2 pool workers tab within about 30 to 60 seconds. 30 to 60 seconds as well. Um, if you have additional miners, um, obviously you're going to start off with .001, and you're going to sequence down. So 001, 002, 003, and etc. So I have two miners, as you can see, this is my second one. Um, and I'm gonna go back into the workers F2 pool so you can take a look at those. Again, I gotta switch this over to Litecoin. And here you go, you can see the two workers that I got going on. 001 and 002, 15 minute hash rate, 139 uh, mega hash, 166 mega hash. And in the past 24 hours, they've been roughly about the same. So not bad. So I hope this clears up any confusion regarding the setup of the uh, Gochal Mini Miners or the Doge Mini Miners. Really, really simple. You got to get yourself an account on the F2 pool, log in, collect all that information. But Gochal makes it really, really easy. You go to here to add, and it's got F2 pool already in there for you. So super simple.